our research scenario, which is a little bit different than our normal research question, we've got a researcher, actually the researcher is conducting a pilot study to determine if an oral treatment intervention will have an effect on the oral condition of cancer patients. That's our research scenario, and we're looking at a pilot study. So we've got a little bit smaller sample size. Our first research question is, does the treatment intervention, aloe juice, predict the oral condition of cancer patients? And our second research question in this pilot study is, is initial cancer stage a contributing predictor of oral condition of cancer patients receiving aloe juice treatment? And so in this scenario, we have aloe juice treatment as our independent variable, which is our groups, and then we're going to look at cancer stage as a covariate to predict um, the oral condition of cancer patients. And in this data set, which um, Kim will make available on um, through the ASC websites, we would start off with SPSS. Of course, we launch SPSS. We go to the Analyze drop-down menu. Uh, we look at general linear models from the drop-down menu, and then from the sidebar menu, we click on univariate. Another window will open up, and into the dependent list, we're going to put in week six oral condition. We actually have different measures for the cancer patients, but in this example, we're just using the oral condition at week six, and that's our dependent variable. So we're going to move that into the dependent variable box, and the fixed factor box, we're going to put in treatment group. Now, this analysis will relate to our first research question, because we just want to know if there's a relationship between the treatment group, those that are getting aloe juice versus those that are not, on the oral condition of these cancer patients six weeks out. Under the options button, we'll click the descriptive statistics section, and then we'll hit continue. And SPSS, of course, puts out lots of tables. The first one, the first table that we're interested in is the descriptive table. And we can see that the dependent variable is a six-week oral condition. And it's important to, to read the title of the table. In this example, we're just using one dependent variable. But if you had um, several uh, analyses that you were running, uh, you want to be sure that you're looking at the correct table. So what we can see is we have our on the far left side, we've got our treatment group, we've got the placebo group, and then we have our allergies group, right? So it's a typical case and control study. We can see that the, the mean level for the placebo group, now this is the oral condition, is 9.93, and then the allergies group is 8.78. So we can see that the allergies group actually has less severity or the oral condition is actually better because we're hoping that you know the lower the number, the better off we're going to be for these patients. We get our standard deviation, and then we can look at our sample size. And our sample size is relatively small. We have a total of 23 participants, but we've got 14 in the placebo group, and then we only have nine in the treatment group because this is a pilot study. The next table that we look at is a test between uh, subject effects. And we can see that on the source, we've got our treatment group, which is the third row. Um, we can actually go ahead and cross. We'll go all the way across. And we can see that the SIG value is 0.453. Now, I know we're all familiar with the 0.05 for p-value as our threshold. But being that this is a pilot study, we want to take a look to see what the SIG value actually is. So our p-value is 0.0, um, essentially point. 453 being that it's not significant, which of course tells us that the treatment is not related so much to the condition, the oral condition of these cancer patients. Below this table, we actually have the R squared. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the R squared for this analysis, for this calculation, is 0 0.027. Now, R squared is an explanation of how, how well the model explains the variability of the data points. It's in percentages, the highest being 1.0 or 100% of the variability. So this being 2.7% is, is relatively low. So we just keep that in mind. We've got a sig value of 0.453, and then we've got our R squared of point, uh, 0 0.027. 
So we're going to run the analysis again, except that this time we're going to uh, add in our covariate of cancer stage, which makes it an ANCOVA. The previous analysis was more of a um, just regular ANOVA or a, actually or a T test. Actually, I'm sorry, it's just the, uh, the ANOVA. So we go back to SPSS. We go analyze general linear models univariate just like before. This time, well, we'll keep the dependent variable as our six-week oral condition. Our fixed factor is the treatment group. And this time we're going to add in the covariate of initial cancer stage. And these are coded one through these are coded one through four. That's a stage, and that goes into what would be the fourth box, which is the covariates. And since SPSS keeps all of our previous um, selections, we can just go ahead and click OK. Well, we'll go through the options first to make sure we're still under descriptive statistics. We don't have to look at the descriptive statistics because we know that hasn't changed. It's still, we have 14 participants in the placebo group and, and nine participants in the treatment group. So we look at the test of uh, between subject effects and we can see that the treatment group, now the sig value has decreased quite a bit. Earlier, it was decreased to 0.188, whereas without the staging included, we had 0.458. And also, too, if we look at the R squared underneath, the R squared has increased quite a bit to almost 30%, or 0.3, whereas previously it was 0.027, or 2.7%. So from this analysis, we can see that even though we do not have a statistically significant result for treatment, there is quite a bit of improvement in the model um, with the addition of the covariate of cancer stage. So once again, we're trying to predict the oral condition of cancer patients, um, you know, if whether or not the, the allergies treatment is working for them. And when we add in the covariate of cancer stage into our analysis, we can see that it's becoming much, much better as a predictor. So the APA write-up, uh, or APA style write-up for ANCOVA, for this particular example would be an ANCOVA analysis was conducted to investigate the pilot study of allergies treatment would improve the oral condition of cancer patients after week six. The oral condition of the placebo group where our sample size is 14, where our mean is 9.93, was higher than the treatment group, sample size 9, mean of 8.78, indicating an improvement of oral condition. That's our first, our first suggestion of improvement. However, the between subject effects was not significant. P-value equals 0.453 with an R squared of 0 0.027 at the 0 0.05 level for this pilot study. Including the covariate initial cancer stage into the analysis improve the model, we see our p-value is been reduced to 0.181 with the R squared of 0.299. Even though the addition of the initial cancer stage is not statistically significant in the model, there is improvement of the omnibus statistical significance and R squared value indicating support for further studies. And so here we have an APA style write-up for the results of our pilot study. So, and so that's pretty much it for the ANCOVA. It's really um, it's pretty straightforward. Just understand that what you're looking at is you've got multiple groups and you're comparing the multiple groups. Except for this time we're actually adding in a covariate to see what the effect is on the overall. If, if the covariate is um, a predictor or if it has any effect in terms of or improvement on your mathematical model. Um, another example that we see common is that when we look at educational interventions of, um, say, for instance, you always use the example of having a, a group of third grade uh, boys in mathematics. We give them a pretest, an intervention, and a post-test, and we'll see whether or not there's improvement between the pretest and the post-test. Um, and we have another group where you know, the students do not get the intervention, they just get the pretest and the post-test. And that seems like a pretty straightforward um, ANOVA. But you take an account for the pre-test scores. 
to determine whether or not students with varying pretest scores, how the intervention affects them, then all of a sudden the pretest score becomes a covariate. And then you would use the ANCOVA to, let, to um, calculate that mathematical model. So the ANCOVA does give you a bit more information, but then again you are using another variable.